This is a lecture from Open Tuition. To benefit from the lecture, you should download the free lecture notes from OpenTuition.com. All right, we're still uh, working through the chapter on accruals and prepayments. Uh, and in the last two lectures, we looked at prepayments, and I hope that made sense. Um, now we're going to look at accruals, uh, which, um, as you'll see, although they are different, the approach uh, there's a big similarity. But anyway, like before, let me explain what accruals are and how we deal with them uh, by example. So can you look first of all in the um, lecture notes at example two? So have a look with me. Uh, Amit started business on the 1st of April 2000 and during the year to 31st of, two, uh, 31st of March 2001, he made the following payments in respect of telephone. And do note, I said in one of the earlier chapters, a business can have any year end it wants. Uh, and do be careful, uh, when the year end isn't December, it doesn't make it harder, but it makes it much easier to make silly mistakes. But his year, uh, we're looking at the year 1st of April, oh, which I can't spell, I wish I haven't tried, 1st of April 2000. The 12 months through to 31st of March 2001. And he made the following payments. In July 2000, he paid 500 for the three months to 30th of June. So, as you'd expect with telephone, um, you don't know how much you owe until after the period's finished. And so the three months to June. Remember, he started in April, so April, May, June, the cost was 500, and he paid it early in July. Uh, so it's always, instead of paying in advance, as we were with insurance in the previous lectures, here we're always paying late. And I think you'd agree, you always pay afterwards with uh, telephone and similarly electricity. And the expression is, we say, we're paying in arrears. Pay in arrears means you pay late, you use the telephone, and then you get the bill and pay it. Uh, and also here, you'll see um, we're paying for every three months at a time. Well, when they say it's three months, it's three months, obviously, April, May, June. Um, the other, they could have used the expression that we're paying quarterly. If you're ever told we're paying quarterly, then again, it means you're paying for three months at a time. And if you're paying quarterly in arrears, then that's effectively what we've got here. We're paying the three months to June. Later, we're paying it early in July. So let's carry on with the question. In July, we paid um, three months to June. In October, we paid the next three months, July, August, September, three months to September. Uh, and in January, we paid the next three months, October, November, December. At the 31st of March, um, remember his uh, year ends on 31st of March, he estimated that 950 was owing for the three months to March, because remember that last payment was only to December, so he's still been using January, February, March. But at 31st of March, he estimated 950 was owing, but he's not received a bill yet. And of course he hasn't. Presumably he'll receive the bill and pay it sometime in April. Uh, if you're wondering how he estimated 950 was owing, I'll talk about that later. But if he says 950, he says 950. Well, what do we want? He says, show extracts from the statement of profit or loss and statement of financial position. And so, um, as always for expenses, I want to know what is the total cost for his 12 months. What matters for the statement of, fine, uh, statement of profit or loss is not the cash that was paid during the period, 
but it's how much did it cost him to use the telephone for those 12 months, whether he's actually paid or he hasn't paid. And how much was it? Well, you can set it up in several ways, but because of the way exam questions are, I think the most efficient is what I'm going to do. First of all, what was the cash paid during the year? Between April and March, well, in July, he paid 500. In October, he paid 600. In January, 750. So the total cash paid is 1850. Now, that's all he's paid. But, of course, he's only paid up to the end of December. Uh, 2000. His year goes to March and so he's still owing for three months. And so the total expense we need to add on those three months. So the amount owing for three months to March He's been using it, he does owe money, but even though he hasn't had the bill, we're told he's estimated he owes 950. So that's how much he still owes. That was the cost of the last three months. And so the total expense is zero for the whole 12 months. Is zero zero, I think 2,800. Now that amount owing is effectively a payable, except of course we haven't had the bill. In that sort of situation, when it's an expense that we owe money, we call it either an accrual or an accrued expense. Um, you can call it either, it doesn't matter, it's an accrual or an accrued expense. It's the amount owing at the end of the period. And so that 2,800, that is the total expense for the year. And it'll appear in the statement of profit or loss. Uh, as far as the... Um, Accrual, the amount owing is concerned, well, it is like a payable. And so just like any payables, any amount owing, that will appear on the Statement of Financial Position under the heading Current Liabilities. It is effectively a payable, but as I say, we haven't had the bill. It's not like... Uh, money owing for goods to uh, suppliers. And so it's under the same heading, but we call it an accrual or accrued expense. How much was it? 950. And there we are. That's what will appear on the statement of profit or loss, 2,800 the expense of the year. That's what will appear in the statement of financial position, the liability, the accrual. All right, well, just like I said with, uh, when we did prepayments, for almost all questions you're asked, it'll be wanting those two figures, and how you arrive at them is up to you. Um, it's take me a while to speak through this, but actually doing it, uh, if you understand, is very fast. However, although you won't be writing up T accounts, just in case they test you on what the debits credits are, let me know. Play bookkeeper, play accountant, and actually do the debits credits. So, back to the beginning. Let's play bookkeeper first of all. Bookkeeper's job is to write up the transactions between April 2000 and March 2001. So, the first thing, 18th of July, we pay 500. Double entry, we pay in cash, so credit cash, debit telephone.
Credit cash debit telephone, how much did we pay? 500. And the bookkeeper's job is simply to record every time we make a payment. Uh, it's not really anything to do with the bookkeeper to look and see, oh, that was two, three months to due, it doesn't matter. We've paid 500, we enter 500. Uh, 22nd of October, we pay 600. Credit cash, debit telephone, 600. 14th of January, still in our year, year to March, we pay 750. Credit cash, debit telephone. And that's all the bookkeeper will have done. Um, I know there's some estimated amount of it, but the bookkeeper's job, all the bookkeeper does is record every time we make a payment, and that's all we've paid. Come to the end of the year, the accountant strikes a balance. And so the balance on the, uh, on the account at the end of the year. Oh dear, I can't add up. Five. One eight five zero. And if we were doing a trial balance, which we're not, and you won't be, but as always, you'd list the balance on the trial balance. Uh, we now come to close off the accounts, and of course, telephone normally goes to statement of financial, uh, statement of profit or loss. It's an expense, but the first thing the accountant does beforehand is look at the last payment and check: have we paid too much? Prepayment, or have we not paid enough? And of course, when we look at the last payment, we see that we've only paid up to December, and our year ends in March. And so we owe money. We estimate the accrual. The accrual, remember, we've only paid to December, so we still owe from 1st of January to 31st of March, uh, 2001. And although I keep saying I will come back later and tell you how we might estimate, the question's told us it's 9.50. And what does that mean? If we still owe 950, the actual expense is obviously higher than 1850. And so to increase the expense, the accountant will debit telephone. Debit telephone with the extra 950 for this year. The double entry, we open a new account called accruals account. Debit telephone, credit accruals. And that one entry now makes everything right. Because how much is there now on telephone? The total is 2,800. And as always, we can move the total to the statement of profit or loss. So that one entry at the end of the year has made sure we've got the correct expense on the step to profit or loss. And the telephone account, the balance is now zero, ready for next year. What about the accruals account? Well, that 950, a credit balance, a creditor, effectively it's like a payable, it's a liability. Um, uh, uh, that will appear, as we had before, it will appear on the statement of financial position as a current liability. And as with all those items, assets, liabilities, we'll leave the balance there. So that one entry, debit the expense, credit accruals, that one entry has given us the right expense for the year. It's given us the liability for the state to financial position. All right, so there we are. Again, I hope that's straightforward. I think you can see the similarity to prepayments. However, as before, I'm going to need one last lecture for completeness 
We're going to look at Amit again, but uh, we'll look at what happens next year, what happens in the following year. So, uh, as before, go back if you need, check you are happy with uh, what we've just done, example two. Uh, in the final lecture, in the next lecture, uh, we'll look at example four, where same question, so keep this in front of you, but same question, but looking at the next unit.